It's August 1st, and that means the 2024 Comprehensive Team Rankings have been finalized. I'm Adam Friedman, the National Rankings Director and Transfer Portal Analyst. The Comprehensive Team Rankings include elements of the high school team rankings and the transfer team rankings. It counts the 25 highest rated players, whether they're high school football prospects or transfer prospects. You can find the full breakdown on Rivals.com, but you can also find the full rankings there on Rivals.com and the number one team is Alabama. Congratulations to the Crimson Tide. Right now, I'm joined by Tony Sukalas of TideIllustrated.com to break down Alabama's number one class in the comprehensive team rankings. Tony, Kalen DeBoer and his staff really hit the ground running uh, after Coach Saban retired there. Uh, They finished with one of the very best classes in the entire country in the transfer portal rankings, number 13 overall there. Uh, They've got a five-star in Caden Proctor, seven four-stars, and and five three-stars. I want to talk about this transfer portal class. Uh, You know, Caden Proctor coming back to Tuscaloosa after spending a little bit of time back at Iowa. Uh, What was it, what's it been like for him to really get re-engaged with the Alabama uh, program and the new coaching staff there? Yeah, the word that I've, you know, heard from Kalen uh, DeBoer and the coaching staff is the easiest five star they've ever dealt with. He, you know, yes, he had that, you know, kind of complicated path where he went to Iowa. I think that was an eye opening thing for him. I think he kind of didn't realize how good he had it at Alabama. And now he's come back to Alabama and he's really kind of been that guy that maybe tells other kids, you know, hey, it's, it's really good over here. And, and he's uh, been really humble about coming back. He's you know, that they started him off on the second team and, and made him work his way back into the first team. And, you know, I think I fully expect him to be the left tackle again. But, you know, he had no problem working back into that uh, role. And I think he's done everything you'd want a guy that, you know, went through that path to kind of do. And, you know, when you look at it, too, at Caden Proctor, you lose a left tackle. There wasn't any other tackle out there in the in the transfer class that matched Caden Proctor's, you know, talent and ability so it was a huge get even though it was getting your guy back it was a huge get for Kalen DeBoer for sure yeah I mean I think it sounded like the players recruited Proctor more so than the coaching staff really did Um, it just seemed like it was natural at that point for him to return to Alabama after things after things went south for him at Iowa Uh, but he's not the only big time player in this transfer class there are four other top 100 transfer prospects. Uh, We've got Damani Jackson and Keon Sab, both defensive backs, highly coveted players. Jackson was a five-star recruit coming over from USC. He announced his transfer in the December window, uh, kind of before, I think it was before Coach Saban announced his retirement. um, And and he stuck around even through the coaching change there. And then Sab, they needed to get a a safety after Caleb Downs transferred out to to Ohio State. And Sab kind of seemed like a natural fit there as well. What's it been like for the two of those guys to really get their feet under them at at Alabama? Both of those guys are guys that have gotten – you know, really high praise from Alabama's coaching staff. You look at Damani Jackson, might be the most important transfer addition they, they've got. When you look at the red flags or the the areas of weakness at Alabama, it's that cornerback position, and they need a five-star kind of guy. They need some st- form of stability. Um, they brought in a lot of young, talented players, but you need that guy that's been there. Damani Jackson has starting experience at USC last year. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at the money Jackson, he injuries his COVID season back in his junior year of high school, it's been a long road of you know incomplete seasons. Last year was kind of his first complete season. I think you're going to see just based from what I've heard, you're going to see kind of him take that next step this, this next season, just because it's, he got the rust off. It's his second full season in a row. He hasn't had one of those in a while. So um, I, the staff is really high on him. And then Keon Saab is another guy that, you know, doesn't get talked as much about uh, as much as Jackson did, but he's a guy that played, um, started a few games on a really, really good Michigan defense and is a guy that would have been a starter for, for Michigan. And so uh, he's going to be right there in the back end with uh, Malachi Moore. And uh, it's going to be really important for Alabama to have those two kind of uh, big time safeties, really experienced safeties with how young its secondary is going to be. So having a guy like him is, is, is another huge piece for the secondary. Yeah, his career got off to a great start at Michigan there, uh, a highly touted high school recruit as well coming out of IMG, but a, a South Jersey native uh, kind of from my neck of the woods there. Um, I wanted to touch on two other uh, transfer prospects that Alabama got 
this cycle. LT Overton, a five-star recruit as a high school player coming over from Texas A&M, very familiar with Alabama, with Tuscaloosa. His family has deep connections there. His, his, one, his parents are administrators at the college level and spent time at Alabama. Uh, what can you tell me about his transition to, uh, to Alabama under Kalen DeBoer? You know, it's actually the, 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 the craziest thing with LT Overton and, and the part that kind of makes it meant to be was, you know, he was brought over before um, they brought in uh, Kane Womack as the defensive coordinator. And it, at the time, you kind of looked at LT Overton pulling up his, you know, bio. now he's 6'5", 265. And you're like, man, this guy's a little bit light for the way Alabama likes to play his defensive lineman. But now you've got Kane, uh, Kane Womack and he has that bandit role, which has the kind of heavy defensive end that's still an edge rusher, but a little bit heavier than what Alabama had as its Jack and Sam linebackers. So LT Overton really fits that bandit role. And, it, you know, him and uh, Jamarian Latham, who they're returning, I think they're going to battle for that starting bandit spot. And um, LT Overton is a guy that, you know, you talk about being in uh, great defenses. You look at that A&M defense was loaded on the defensive line. So, you know, he didn't really – live up to his necessarily to his potential at A&M, but I think there's a lot of talent there. And I think he's at a spot where I think he can compete, can compete for a lot more playing time at Alabama this fall. Sure. Sure. And well, Kalen DeBoer did bring over four uh, transfers from Washington. The highest rated for us was Parker Brailsford, number 40 in the transfer rankings, followed by Jeremy Bernard, Austin Mack, the quarterback, and Josh Cuevas, uh, the tight end. How have those guys transi transitioned to the Alabama you know, program and you know, helped maybe other players get used to how Kalen DeBoer operates? It's been an interesting transfer for Parker Brailsford, who was kind of, he went through non-football related issues that kept him out of the spring. Um, Kalen DeBoer and the rest of the staff remained confident in him and, and stated that he was in good standing that whole time. I think that was just, there's a lot of change going on. And, I, you know, I think with being a, you know, uh, a, a young kid, he just kind of had to get that all sorted out. He's full go for fall camp. And I think he's going to be a big part of, you know, knowing Kalen DeBoer's system, getting the rest of the offensive line gelled quicker in the system. So I think he'll be really big. I think of that bunch, though, that's coming from Washington, I got to highlight Jeremy Bernard. He had three catches for 122 yards on during the A-Day scrimmage. And I, I personally think that he is going to be Alabama's go-to receiver this year. Um, Alabama doesn't really necessarily have that certified go-to guy. But when you look at the way Jeremy Bernard knows the offense, um, his chemistry with Jalen Milrow during the A-Day game looked pretty good. Obviously, they're going to have to continue to build on that. But um, I, I could see him being, you know, if things click the way that they're looking like they could click, I, I could see him being a thousand yard guy. He's a guy that got 400 yards uh, in a Washington offense last year that had three uh, day two picks or higher. So, yeah, you know, I, I think that um, he's a really talented kid and he's really good. He, Austin Max, kind of a uh, quarterback for the future. And Josh Cuevas is kind of a guy that will provide depth at the tight end position, especially when you come to like a blocking tight end or H back kind of guy. Um, those aren't necessarily the most high profile, you know, additions for this year, but for moving forward, they could be big. Sure, sure. All right. Well, to put a cap on it for Alabama's transfer class, number 13 overall in the transfer rankings for the high school class, they had number two overall class there with four five star signees, 17 four star signees and seven three stars, an average star rating of 3.89, which is really, really impressive there. Obviously, a lot of those guys, or almost all those guys, signed when Nick Saban was still the head coach there. Certainly, though, some impressive additions there. Out of this group, I've heard a lot of really, really great praise for Ryan Williams, a receiver from Alabama. He stuck with Alabama through the whole uh, transition to Kalen DeBoer there. How has he done, really, at the, at the in-state program that he was really, really linked to from day one almost? It's crazy because Ryan Williams is the youngest player on Alabama's roster. But when you hear anyone talk about him from the program, the thing that they talk about is his maturity. And I think nobody really can believe that here's a kid that, you know, should be a senior in high school. Um, he doesn't act like that, you know, the way his work ethic, the way he's come in, what he's done, the, the steps that he's done already. Now, he was a summer arrival, but um, the, the steps he's done already to learn the playbook to get you know initiated with the team has really impressed a lot of his teammates and his uh uh his coaches I, I don't think anyone looks at him as this like entitled five-star kid he's really coming in and 
Um, I think he's going to be a difference maker. Not sure if he'll come in directly as one of the three starting wide receivers, but he'll definitely be in the mix. And I, I think he's going to be a huge part of this offense. Yeah, I'd imagine we see him on the field a good bit come the fall there. Uh, any other true freshman 2024 players that are making a strong impact right now? Yeah, I think Zabian Brown's right in there for the uh, cornerback spot across from Dam uh, Damani Jackson. Um, you also have Deshaun Jones from um, Wake Forest as a transfer. It'll be between one of those two guys. I think when you look at Zabian Brown, he's got a lot of uh, potential. Uh, he's got a really high ceiling. And he's comes in, I think, a year older than most uh, high school players. So he's also a, a year more mature. He's picked up the defense a lot better. He's coming off a really strong spring where he was the, the starter across from Jackson. So um, – so it's always hard to, to throw in a uh, you know a freshman at the cornerback position. That's that's pretty tough. But if anyone can do it, I think Xavier Brown's in the mix of players that can. So um, I think there's a strong possibility he plays. Jalen Mbakwe is another guy that they're really high on. He probably has to polish up his game a little bit more. But towards the end of the season, I could see him maybe getting some playing time as well. Sounds good. All right, Tony. Well, thanks very much for joining me here to break down Alabama's number one class in the comprehensive team rankings. Make sure you give Tony a follow and check out all of his content on TideIllustrated.com. I'm rankings director and transfer portal analyst, Adam Friedman. Please remember to subscribe to the Rivals.com YouTube channel and follow all of the Rivals social media accounts. And of course, you can follow all of our content on Rivals.com. Thanks, thanks a lot, Tony. Yeah, no problem.